Good morning. I'm here in my practice. It's just the first of the day, eight o'clock. I have my power hour, so I'm going to be doing a number of consultations, checks before we get started with our patient treatment. So I'm going to try to chronicle the day just to give you a glimpse of what it's like to be a busy endodontist, uh, trying to do your best all day long and trying to also keep your center and stay grounded and feel good about yourself and everyone around you. So I'll keep you posted through the day. Sending love. Okay, so first consultation I just did. So a patient has some bone loss in between tooth number two and three. Uh, previous initiated treatment not complete on tooth number two. Necrotic tooth number three. It really looks like there's a confluence of these lesions. So interestingly enough, patient will need retreatment number two, RCT number three. She's going to come back at a different day. I'm going to do them individually. Uh, there is a lot of bone loss around it. Uh, the there's some complexity to the anatomy. So I'm going to basically do it in two separate visits. So that's my first consult. Okay, just did a follow-up of a case I did in uh, April of this year and definitely good healing confirmed with comb beam. It's a little sooner than I would normally check it with comb beam, but I was concerned about the adjacent tooth being involved, so this was a follow-up. The one concern I have about this case, though, is the, that there may be some recurrent decay getting underneath the crown retainer of, of a bridge, so we're going to evaluate that. I'll speak to the general dentist, but overall, she is starting to heal, which is positive. It's just a matter of allowing us to determine if we can maintain stability of this tooth or if we have to take off the bridge, potentially do crown lengthening and a new bridge or whether we just try to fill the gap again and see if it will hold. So that was my second evaluation. Okay, next evaluation was tooth number 10. It has a small lesion apically, clearly has previous apical microsurgery. This patient's dentist had retired a few years ago. He hadn't seen anyone. He says the surgery was done about three to four years ago. So now it's hard to interpret, is this lesion healing? Is it getting bigger? Um, he's asymptomatic. He hasn't had any problem. So now what we're going to try to do is get some historical images to try to make a comparison from then to now. And now it's the best way to determine, are we in a healing phase? Are we going the wrong direction? But ultimately, right now, we have to take a step back and just make sure that we're able to accurately interpret. Now, if I can't get an older image, the another step would be to wait six or nine months and take new images myself. That would give me another opportunity to have today as the historical reference going forward. But if I could get the previous records, then it would allow me to make a determination now. So just another standard type of consultation we do here in an endo practice, and I hope you're enjoying it. Okay, so last consult here this morning. So patient presents number 30, um, getting ready to get a crown, but it's got a big resorptive lesion, external invasive cervical resorption on the mesiobuccal root of number 30. I evaluated it. It's pretty significant, pretty deep. Um, ultimately, this will have a guarded prognosis long term. As it turns out, patient had a very similar situation on number 19 several years ago, wound up having extraction and implant. So I discussed the pros, the cons, the ups, the downs, the risks, the benefits of trying to save the tooth versus considering extraction. And of course, with the history of number 19 and just the severity of it, I informed her that I think in this case, an implant might ultimately have a better long-term prognosis and be a better option. So she's going to talk with her dentist. I will talk with her dentist and we'll move forward from there. But just another example of how frequent we're seeing these resorptive cases. It's really incredible in comparison to early in my career, uh, seeing them just constantly. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this. This is what we call our power hour and I'm going to start my first treatment. Okay, so things went a little off the rails in regards to time. So I had the first patient wound up, um, well, first my team had to interrupt me because a, a referring dentist called about another patient and he had the patient in the chair. So I had to take that call, which ran me probably about seven minutes beyond where I wanted to start the treatment. Um, as it turns out, there was some blockage of one of the canals from previous filling. Um, it was a little more difficult than I anticipated. I was able to complete that treatment, no problem. Uh, what I did was I had to go right into the second case, which wound up being a post core, a cast post core under a crown, uh, number 14, that I had to retreat. And that in and of itself was quite a project. So then I ran a bit over again into the next patient, which is my third patient who now is anesthetized. This is another retreatment through a crown. And so, you know, time is always um, our biggest issue. And so when you have these more challenging cases, you just, I just take a breath. Just continue to stay centered. Uh, patients understand sometimes and they have to wait just a little bit. It wasn't anything crazy, uh, but I probably didn't get my second patient uh, anesthetized 
for probably 12 minutes after I would have liked to. And then once I completed her, now I walked into my next patient. The, the one advantage was both the second and third patients had been here for consultations. So I didn't have to do my whole diagnostic workup and description. We were able to go right to anesthesia. So just want to give you a little sort of glimpse into what it's like. Um, one little thing like a general dentist calling and wanting to speak about a certain case because the patient's in the chair takes precedence, but then I'm in a catch up mode and I have to work very hard to make sure that the excellence of my treatment remains exactly the same. My efficiency is as, as impeccable as possible so that we can get the same exact result if we had had more than enough time. So anyway, just sharing with you, I'm about to start the third case and uh, this is a day in the life of an endodontist. Okay, so my third case, retreatment tooth number 19 is complete. Everything went great. I am running about 10 minutes late now, so my next patient is already in the chair waiting, so I'm going to go ahead and get that going. Um, obviously, sometimes in real-life practice, time is an issue, and we do run a little bit late, but there's always an opportunity to catch up, and I think this will be the hour to do it. So just wanted to fill you in. It's not all just beautiful images that we get. It's also managing time, managing our emotions, taking a breath making sure that I stay centered so that my focus is on point, even if I am running a little bit late. So just a good lesson for all of us. Okay, so my next patient is anesthetized and I'm gonna grab a quick little bite. Um, I typically don't take a lunch time. I just sort of eat when I can. So I'll take a quick bite, get some energy and I'm gonna keep going. So anyway, uh, just an example, you know, it's a waterfall of time. So because I got pulled away for a moment, have to serve my referring dentist, had to address the concern, uh, patient was in the chair, then ultimately that just compounds. You know, I had a couple of tough cases in a row, retreatments, going through and finding that cast post and core. And so now I have a uh, number 18 uh, deep filling that was placed very close to the pulp. So hopefully this will be the chance for me to get back on track and then be able to complete the day uh, on time. So anyway, I'll keep you posted. Hope you're enjoying the chronicles of the day in the life of an endodontist. Okay, so I just finished tooth number 19, sorry, number 18. Everything went great. I'm just about right back on time. I have a patient ready and I also have two checks. One of them is a filling complaint uh, patient I treated last week and the other was the second patient from this morning came back and said her, her filling doesn't feel right, her bite doesn't feel right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, address my initial patient and then I'll go check those two fillings and we'll continue on. I have not really eaten much. I took a bite. This is sometimes the sacrifice when you run behind, but I will catch up with that as well. So we have to take care of ourselves during the day. We can't just let ourselves go. So anyway, doing great. <sighs> Breathe, make it through the afternoon and we're almost there. Okay, so I went ahead and finished that tooth number 18. Everything came out great. We had two filling checks, essentially. One was a patient from earlier today. Um, she said it felt kind of rough, so I polished it. And then another was a patient from last week, and actually a piece of the buckle broke off of tooth number five. The temporary filling was actually intact. So I'm actually pretty much right on time right now for my normal schedule. I'm going to grab a quick bite. We've got tooth number two waiting, already anesthetized. Uh, patient had a um, deep filling and a temporary crown placed a few weeks ago, and now he's having a lot of symptoms. So it was symptomatic irreversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis. So we're making our way through the day, still have several more patients, so we'll keep you posted. And this is, again, just a real life chronicle of a day in the life in endo practice. So sending everyone love. Mwah. Okay, so now I am firmly back on time. Uh, I just did tooth number two. Everything went very smoothly. It was probably the first case I had today where everything was just right on point. So we're a little more than midway through the day, and I would classify this day as having been pretty challenging just from a case perspective. Um, just, you know, had some difficulty finding some of the canals, ultimately did find them. Um, anytime you encounter a cast post and core, that's going to always present a massive challenge with time limitations. Uh, but again, everything's gone great. We're right back on time. Patients are happy. So um, I've already eaten a little something. And so now my next patient is being seated. So we are rolling and I'm going to keep going with this chronicle for today and uh, hope that you enjoy it and gain something from it. Um, sometimes it can be challenging being in practice and running late. Again, using your breath, staying calm, staying centered and recognizing that you're doing the best you can. And that's really all that can be expected. So I'll keep you posted. 
Okay, next case, we're getting ready. Retreatment tooth number three through a bridge. So a patient is already anesthetized. Again, uh, running late in practice is inevitable. It's just finding ways to stay centered, stay calm, so you can just keep moving efficiently and find your way back on schedule. So we're right back on schedule. We have one more patient after this for right now. We do get a lot of emergency patients, so it is possible there could be an additional one. But for now, I've got one more to go after this one. I'll check back in. Hope you're enjoying this little chronicle. It's been a good day. Um, some definitely challenging cases today. Uh, overall, we've all handled it well. Really appreciate my team. They do a great job keeping everything going. And so we're going to jump back in, get another one done, and then I'll check in again. Okay, so finished retreatment tooth number three. It was through a bridge. Um, it was actually thermophil, so it took me quite a bit to get those thermophil carriers removed. I did locate a previously untreated MB2 canal, so that was a huge win. And everything went great. Um, I'm on my last case now. It's tooth number 14, again, through a crown, um, necrotic tooth. So the day is going smoothly. We did run a little late working those thermophil carriers out, but we're in great shape to finish up the day strong. Again, Challenging day, you know, no doubt that the cases were challenging as we see in practice. I don't always have so many retreatments on my schedule, but today was pretty retreat heavy, which always is going to have an impact on time. So anyway, um, yeah, so one more case to go. It's been a good day. I feel good. been doing my breathing, staying calm, staying centered. I've got a great team supporting me. Uh, so anyway, we're off and running to the last case. Uh, and yeah, this is a day in the life, day in the life of an endodontist. So hope you've enjoyed this chronicle. Sending love. Okay, that's a wrap. So we had our power hour this morning. We had seven cases today that we completed in one visit. I have to say today was a challenge. The cases were really tricky, uh, really took me to task, but that's what we're about. You know, as specialists, we're here to treat every case that comes our way. We want to do our very best job and be able to provide the best treatment. So that means sometimes slowing down and just taking the time that you need. Um, I had great patients today. It was just that the, the schedule was pretty heavy on retreatment. So I'm going to post each of the cases that I completed today just as a true chronicle of just one single day, one snapshot. No two days are the same, uh, but overall I do feel tired. Uh, it's been a long one, but I'm excited that I was able to share this with you. I uh, hope that this is helpful to anyone and just sending you lots of love from Chicago, from King Endodontics. Hope you have a beautiful day and if you are doing endo, take your time, breathe, and just be patient so you can do your very best job. Sending love from King Endodontics. Mwah.